Um, on the question of sodium, you know, long-term salt intake, um, there is, it's been known for a century or more that when, in, in people who are doing total fasts, that total fasting increased the kidney's excretion of salt. Now, how does that make sense? You know, if you're not eating anything, why should the body get rid of something that's, it's, and by the way, sodium is an essential nutrient. You know, it's, it's not a toxic thing. You, people have to have enough of it to maintain normal health. Anyway, so this is called, you know, well, I, I won't use the Latin term, but it's the accelerated salt excre sodium excretion due to fasting. Well, it also turns out that happens with a well-formulated ketogenic diet. And we have seen over and over in our previous experience that particularly people with hypertension, when we put them on a ketogenic diet, it, not 20, you know, uh, 20 weeks or, or, or uh, 52 weeks later, after the weight loss, we don't see some reduction in blood pressure. Blood pressure comes down in the first week or two. So this is not a, a, a secondary effect of weight loss. This is something biochemical happening when people go into nutritional ketosis. And part of it is this accelerated sodium excretion. And so in the... In our study at one year, the average systolic blood pressure loss, that's the upper one, was down six, and the diastolic was down three. And that's what you get with a mainstream drug. And yet we took away a lot of the people's hypertension drugs, and they got better blood pressure control. In fact, when, when, and I've, my previous experience, going back 30 years, when that happens, people start getting lightheadedness, dizziness, fatigue, and constipation, what everybody calls the Atkins flu or the keto flu. Um, when they don't get enough sodium. And we found we had to give them not the usual three grams a day that the average American eats, or the 2.3 grams that our government says we should all reduce down. We had to give them, now these are people who no longer have hypertension or didn't have hypertension, we had to give them five grams of sodium a day to maintain their well-being and function. And when we do that in your, 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 this research crew, blood pressure goes down. I mean, how do you figure? And the answer is that Nutritional ketosis is a different state with different nutrient requirements, and five grams is really the minimum most people need to maintain well-being and function when they do this. Uh, and we're tracking, again, this group out for five years. Um, uh, I am very skeptical of my own hypotheses, and so <laughs> I, you know, the, the only way to make, for me to go to sleep at night is, and sleep all night is I know I've tried to prove it wrong, and if, it, if I didn't prove it wrong, then I can you know, sit up here and honestly say, this is safe to do. Now, I was kind of ostracized among a lot of my nutrition and, and, and other medical colleagues for saying this, starting back, and I first published that in 1980. Um, and then in 2014, a group of scientists studying uh, uh, people in 100,000 people in 17 different countries where they didn't ask them, how much salt did you eat yesterday? They had them actually they collected a urine sample and analyzed the urine sample for how much sodium they were excretion, excreting. Now, that's, n there are details of that process we won't get into, but they had about an 85% accuracy when they, the way they did that test. But when you have an 85% accurate test in 102,000 people, it's a very robust observation. And what they found was, and they followed these people for four years after they did the sodium collection, and where do you think the lowest mortality was? for this group, between four and five grams of sodium per day. That when you get to the governments, I'll go your way, this is going down in, in sodium intake, mortality risk is at 50% increased at 2.3 grams per day. And yet when you go above five or six, it, it trends up slightly. But this is a steep rise. This was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2014. It's now been corroborated by other uh, uh, additional studies. And really, the whole sodium uh, uh, causes disease and, and mortality. And again, congestive heart failure, to high, severe hypertension, maybe exceptions that have to be individualized managed. But for the population in general, it's becoming clear we should not be restricting our sodium anywhere near as much as this hypothesis that was never proven in a randomized trial. This hypothesis has, has misled us to, to, to uh, build our guidelines around. It's going to change.